Hey everybody, it's Scully. Um, I kind of just had some stuff on my mind lately that I wanted to talk about, so I decided I'd make a video about it, discussing these things. So, um, a lot of people with mental illness, um, if seeing a therapy and their primary care doctor, and maybe even certain medications alone that they have tried, have not been fully effective and or worked in the past, uh, they may have to eventually be referred to a psychiatrist because they are more qualified to deal with those kind of things. Just like how if you have heart issues, you see a cardiologist, and if you have um, issues uh, with your like urinary related stuff, you see a urologist. So a psychiatrist is more for mental illness related issues. So a lot of people tend to think that um, it's kind of like with anything. Sometimes you can see you know, one doctor and they kind of, you know, you kind of stick with them and things are pretty hunky-dory after that. But um, just like anything, sometimes you have to see a couple different doctors to kind of figure out what's going on um, because uh, different doctors could think different things are going on and people are very complex and complicated. So sometimes um, getting another opinion or just seeing another doctor altogether may be an option depending on the circumstances. Uh, when you think of seeing a psychiatrist, I do kind of think of, um, of it like taking a medication, though, where, like, it's not going to just work the first day. They're not going to know everything about you during the first visit, and um, although that can be very frustrating, it's also very realistic because, you know, they're not a mind reader, you're not a mind reader, and it can really kind of be trial and error to figure out what's really going on, as um, a lot of mental illnesses have a lot of very similar or even overlapping symptoms, especially if somebody has more than one diagnosis, like I talked about in one of my other videos. So, um, when you decide to see, if you have one and you decide that's not working out and you're going to see another one, um, there can be maybe a couple things that kind of point you in that direction. Like, um, if you've been seeing them for a while and you feel like you're kind of not getting anywhere, or maybe even the treatments that they're, um, having you on, like medications especially, aren't working. That can sometimes be an indicator, but not always. Again, you kind of have to give it some time to figure it out. But um, sometimes people will have to see another psychiatrist for insurance-related reasons, financial reasons, um, even travel-related re um, reasons, if it's maybe kind of a mobility issue, transportation, or just the simple fact that they're very far away. Some people, some places can do telehealth, but that's not always an option for every practice, especially if you don't have a computer or if you are really somebody who just likes to see your doctor in person. I mean, that's pretty understandable. So yeah, when you were definitely, um, when you were seeing a doctor, there are some things that um, if you are seeing your doctor and having some issues that you can try to salvage that too, um, especially if you've been seeing them for a while because you really want to be on the same page and it is kind of like, easy to think, okay, I'll just see another doctor, but sometimes you can have a good doctor, but maybe there's miscommunications going on, or you're just simply not on the same page. Um, so some things that you can try, whether you have maybe like your current doctor, or even if you're seeing another doctor, um, you can really kind of have a list of things that you're concerned about, whether it's misdiagnosis, or even if it's treatment related, because maybe if they're putting you on a medication and you've been on one similar to it in the same family that didn't work for it in the past. And it's easy to want to kind of refuse that kind of treatment in the past. And again, that's understandable. But going into things with an open mind is also very important, especially in regards to your treatment. And you do, to some degree, have to be your own advocate when it comes to your treatment. But you also don't want to just be resistant to any kind of treatment that's recommended. So if it's a matter of like, okay, well, maybe you're unsure about this medication because you tried one similar um, to it, you can kind of go into your doctor and let them know that you've tried medications like that before. And that way, rather than just rejecting the treatment altogether, they can kind of sit and listen to your concerns. And rather than avoiding that treatment altogether, you could actually kind of have like a backup plan. Like, okay, you're going to actually try this medication so rather than, oh, well, I'm not going to take the medication, really kind of sit down with your doctor and if they really want to help you, and um, especially with your concerns in the matter, if you kind of have um, some sort of backup plan in case you're on this medication and something really unexpected happens, like you get worse or you even have a reaction to it because people can have allergies to medications or they can even interact with other medications and their regimen. And you don't always think about that sometimes until things pop up like that, that you can maybe go to some place temporarily until they can fit you in or if they have to get you in really unexpectedly that they can 
And I also found that's rather helpful for people with anxiety as well, because it's very scary to meet another person for the first time. Um, you talk about some pretty sensitive topics, sometimes like even medication, or you just simply feel like you're just kind of sitting there and like no disrespect or anything, but you kind of feel like you're getting your brain picked apart by somebody you don't know. And that's a very important part of the, you know, seeing this doctor. But especially if you're somebody who's maybe never seen a doctor before, um, like a psychiatrist, or you've seen several, that kind of feeling can be really overwhelming. And of course, that's going to probably be a little uncomfortable at first, but just remember that there are people like you and they do want to help you. You can kind of sit there maybe feel like you're being analyzed a lot, but really they're just trying to learn about you and help you as much as they can because they are very trained in this profession. So although it's normal to be anxious about such matters like this, keep in mind that you do have a professional helping you. So although this can be overwhelming, especially if you have like social anxiety, these guys, they, they know their stuff. They know what they're doing. It may not seem like it at first, but you do have to kind of find it in yourself to just try as hard as you can, not only to kind of hear them out about various things, but also kind of give them a chance because it's just, again, they don't know everything the first visit and it will take some time. And if they are a very good doctor, they will take their time and kind of, you know, analyzing you and figuring out what's going on. And you probably will come in on different days, maybe feeling better or worse than last time. And that can further indicate like if treatment's working or if it needs to change. So although it's a very long process, like trying a medication for the very first time, it's, it is a necessary thing, although it can be very, very frustrating. So, um, and if you ever find yourself in a position where you, where you are kind of questioning some of the treatments, um, therapies, tactics, so there's a way that you can ask your doctors without being too assertive about it. Like being assertive and being kind of like an advocate for your treatment is a good thing, but you don't want to be so straightforward about it that you kind of scare off your doctor and kind of make things look bad. There's a way you can calmly kind of tell them like, you know, hey, I've um, I've been seeing you for a little bit now and tried various therapies and I don't feel like a lot of them are working. So I came up with a list of my concerns as to into why I feel that way. And Assuming they really have your best interest, I'm sure they'll sit down with you and probably take a look at that and see what they can do to see if, what they can do to, you know, make that better, see if there's anything else they haven't tried. Um, usually, really, most doctors, um, if there are concerns like that, they really do want to know about it and they want to see what's going on. So as long as you kind of approach them in an appropriate and professional manner and you're not kind of all up in their face about it, so to speak, that they um, more than likely will take time to look at that, which... I mean, of course, they have a busy schedule like anybody does, but like I said, if um, if you have a maybe a psychiatrist you've been for a little while and they're actually a really great doctor, but you just have some concerns, don't be so quick to kind of brush them out of the way if there's things that they can do to fix it. And if you've tried really just about everything and you have to, of course, go elsewhere and get another doctor, don't be afraid to be your own advocate either because your, your therapy, your treatment does matter, your health does matter, and you do want to get better but it's kind of like uh, if you have a job that doesn't work out, though, you don't want to burn any bridges if you can help it because people are human, you're human, and sometimes it's not a good fit, and sometimes it's not even necessarily about whether or not they're a good doctor. Maybe they're actually a very great doctor, but maybe, like, I tell people all the time, especially in relationships, that sometimes certain types of people just work better together than others and some don't. And sometimes you do have to kind of go out of your way and it is very hard to realize like, okay, well, this isn't working, but sometimes it is a necessary evil or maybe I don't want to say evil, but you know, sometimes it's a necessary thing in regards to getting the right treatment. And um, especially if you're going to be seeing somebody long-term because sadly most kind of therapies really aren't cheap these days and you really do want the most out of your, out of your financial kind of obligations if you can help it. So just kind of some things to think about if you find yourself in a little bit of a pickle with all this stuff because it's it's very frustrating and and again don't as frustrating as it can be don't take it out on them either. Just kind of do what you can to try to salvage it and if not there are other options or are other people and if you're scared especially seeing another doctor for the first time because maybe the other one didn't work out so well uh, you can get past it you can be, you can triumph over this and you can get somebody who's better fitted for you because there is somebody out there for everybody. 
and sometimes it doesn't happen the first time but just keep looking and keep trying and kind of like, just like how they do trial and error some of their therapies kind of think okay you know what things have you done with doctors in the past that didn't work so well either you know were you a bit stubborn honestly or did you listen well and again not blaming anybody but sometimes it's hard to acknowledge our own flaws as well and sometimes it can take improvement from both sides and if you just kind of look within yourself and mistakes you can see what may actually work next time but until then have a great day everybody